honestly was a little concerned with the capacity of what I could bring uh, in terms of um, if you wanted to do like um, eyewitness, uh, you know, photography and uh, videos and stuff like that. So that was my initial like, you know, how am I going to bring anything with my work there? But then we did have conversations about doing like um, eyewitness, uh, like testimonial sketches, like you would have uh, like a court um, hearing and uh, uh, so that was an interesting uh, approach, and I think that was your approach, Jack. Um, from the get-go, we were trying to see where artwork could, artwork could fit. Um, uh, there was also uh, just like uh, pitch concepts I was working on with Chris uh, very early on for like video ideas. And uh, we just wanted to go as ambitious as possible, um, see what's possible, you know, we can refine what's uh, doable as we went along, but, uh, um, you know, it was a pretty broad canvas to, to paint in terms of what we could do. And, uh, that was fun. And, uh, I think, uh, aside from working on that and then, you know, doing some, uh, photo manipulation for like, uh, you know, photography that was going to be on the Dino Tracker site, uh, you know, it was fun to come up with the idea of like, um, almost like an illustration board for, like uh local wildlife like you'd find on a trail map or something uh so just like a like a call out for like a warning sign for what's you know what's around the area and what you need to be careful for and uh so we were doing you know wanted to draw a lot of the known species from the legacy era and you know the jurassic world era what we were able to at least draw at the time because there's a lot of new species in dominion that was still under wraps but uh, that's to give the fans that sort of hint that you know those old legacy species are still out right. there in some capacity or you know because it's drawn artwork it, you know for, it keeps universal happy as well if they don't <laughs> if for whatever reason they don't want to bring those characters back there's like because it's drawn artwork it could be spec it's more speculative yeah. than anything um but as soon as fans see it they basically run the canon by saying yep that's confirmed yeah. <laughs> and then there's nothing else anyone could do about it it's like we saw the tiger yeah. stripe raptor on that billboard that means it's out there and so it's like yep that's what we that that's was what the whole want. point yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 and and one more note was there uh it was a fun angle to kind of try to pay some kind of homage to like the concept art that was done for the film so kind of like the crash mccreary or uh, Joey Orozco kind of styles that uh, you saw in like the old concept art for the park films. So mm -hmm. just kind of doing like the profile um, style for the, that kind of artwork on the site. We thought. How, how many of those did you do in the end? Again, I can't remember. Oh, uh, you know, I never counted. I think I did. I did the male, female Rex because we want to show sexual dimorphism and kind of really, you know, solid, you know, just. It reinforced the the lore of the you know the films mm -hmm. and like that aspect so we, there's a male female rex uh, i did so many raptors uh we did the male female version one or uh i think it was the uh highland raptors right chris was like the lost world one or that's the jp highland is the jurassic park three ones okay and, uh, yeah so the the, J, the jp3 variants the male and female or that we wanted to uh dub them the highland and then lowland was the lost world male Jurassic park female that you also see in lost world and then uh jack and uh who was it, it was chris jack and maybe ross was in uh or maybe it was just the three of us that we were playing with the idea of like the tribe three um that was hinted at in trespasser by him and and uh we were kind of pooling you know we wanted to show like a crossbreed in terms of pattern and some color and also design but also uh pay homage to like the trespass a little bit of the trespasser design and then a uh, mock-up that you did jack of, of the uh, like bluish female um something so v2 or whatever it was like yes. giving a bit yeah giving a bit of potential history to that but unfortunately well, they a, didn't make it into the like the the final the final cut right. did they? Yeah. which was a shame um yeah. but yeah, and then you did the pteranodons, and I think I'm just thinking back at the Cenoceratops as well. Yes, that was the yeah, the Cenoceratops. Yeah, so I think yeah. that was uh, that was it. That was all we got to. Mm. But it was fun. 
No, it was, re it was really, really cool. Um, just to go back, like the um, the initial when they, you know, we were pitched Dino Track at the beginning, and I asked about because obviously you were part of the team from the DPG days, and I was thinking, you know, what could we do for sort of drawn artwork and get your style? Because I love your art style, so it's like we've got to get as much of that out there as possible in some capacity. But yeah, the initial thought was, you know, should we have these testimonial like eyewitness reports, like someone boots on the ground is there listening to eyewitness accounts of dinosaur encounters and then they draw these sketches like you get in courtrooms for mm -hmm. for for what they saw so because people would see dinosaurs and they might not have a camera on them and you don't want right. just a load of written text on the screen so the idea was you'd have the information on the saying itself and then um and then a picture to accompany it unfortunately that that kind of thing never got completely um you know, through onto Dino Tracker, but you did some amazing artwork of the one of the concepts. Actually, was a really early concept of a compy in a chicken coop. Like one of the earliest ideas we had for Dino Tracker was the idea of someone going to their chicken coop and the chicken's been replaced by a compsognathus that's like eating the chickens. Um, and you did that concept art of that and the Carnotauruses with the cattle, which was like the, an amazing, amazing piece and. I think I've put them in this. Well, I put them in this video, but in a previous video as well. And then, um, but then it evolved into like you and Chris doing concepts for videos and stuff like that. And one of the ones yeah. I want to bring up is like, like you, we were thinking of doing your incorporating your artwork in in a way of like drawn, or clearly stylized artwork. What actually eventually became was you ended up doing artwork of real sightings out in the wild. And the two that right. spring to mind, that for me, well, obviously the Dimorphodons on the tower. You know, Sam took a picture of that tower, didn't he? And uh, and then you added Dimorphodons on it because it's silhouetted. That there's people I've actually shown that to, and I've zoomed in and gone, look, you can see now that it's too. They 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 don't realise. They just have no idea that it's artwork until it's pointed out to them. So hopefully, uh, I haven't spoiled too many uh, people's <laughs> visions of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> And the one that you and Chris worked on, which was unchanged throughout the whole process, which was the Stiggy Moloch getting attacked by the lions. Yeah, that was a fun one. Yeah, that that, that turned out, the concept was really cool. Chris uh, was like, we should do like night trail cams and show like the infrared kind of, everything's so bleached out and it could be chaotic looking, you know, and especially in motion. And I was like, well, that'd be kind of easy to make look real because you're not refining like the form or anything it's just kind of it's like the blurry chaos of a moment and uh it turned out it was easy to do for one and then it also turned out it was like one of my favorite ones that i think me and uh, worked on it and, and yeah. um yeah and i'm glad that that went through in the end because that was like the first thing i did <laughs> one of the first things we did <laughs> we did so. that back in the beginning i'm talking like january of 2019 Mm. That, yeah, doc, that was the concept, that document and those were originally kind of like originally it was just kind of concept art we were just trying to like think of some ideas um for video pitches but then you did the artwork for them and that one just turned out so photoreal that with a few tweaks we just brought it forward and what i really liked about that and that was like one of the goals immediately is there's a lot of um even the movies there's a lot of focus of the dinosaurs and you know eating people or animals of our world and I like the idea of kind of flipping it on the script, flipping the script on that, and showing that dinosaurs are animals. So having the mountain lion hunting the stigmolic was something that I felt like was really important to help us remember that they're not monsters. These are just animals that have been introduced in the natural world, and that give and take is going to go both ways. Yeah, I and love I thought that. that was a really, a really fun way to explore that the trap cam uh, footage. And we had a mm. lot of a lot of fun ideas, and unfortunately, you know. We would love to do hundreds of videos, but we can't. Sure. Man, um, man, Manuel will start shaking. <laughs> it's like hundreds of videos. I, guess, yeah. <laughs> I, like I did twenty in seven months. <laughs> a bit to your um species, your species art that you did, like for the raptors and everything like that. For like a little bit of context, what we were looking to do with that initially was um you know we're we're experimenting with different ways to incorporate it, and we found different ways to incorporate it. But originally, we we're going to do like um if you were to go to like a national park. And there's like the species identification pamphlets for the animals that will be in the national park and it'll be illustrated but it'll be illustrated in a way that you can easily identify the animal know the traits so we were going to do that with the raptors and everything like that and that's why we that's why we had like the highland and the lowland because we had to think of it from you know you don't 
use animals' technical Latin names while describing them. You say grizzly bear or something like that. You don't use their, like, Latin names. So we wanted to give them common names um, in a way that we can easily identify it. Because you can't be like... You can't, you can't write Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptor in universe. <laughs> so we needed we needed an experiment there. But ultimately, just it was figuring out a way to... It wasn't even necessarily shut down. It just we couldn't figure out a way to incorporate it in the website seamlessly. And then it got very complicated with like social media and like, well, how do you share this? And then what do you create for it? And if we do it for this one, why don't we do it for that mm. one? And it just created a uh, conundrum. And, it, and you, know, you never know, like in the future, if something comes up, then there's still room for that kind of stuff to work potentially in the in future in the future um you know a lot of the stuff we talk about during these behind the scenes uh, fall into that category of you know this ne- never say never kind of thing um but yeah I'm, I'm sure manuel you you were pleased to find out that you didn't have to do some of the concerts that we were coming up with because some of them were really out there that i loved and i wish we did, could do like one of my favorite pieces of artwork that you did um chris and yaroslav working on was the t-rex eating the whale because again breaks just my just, heart we couldn't get that yeah in. it breaks that's my heart as idea. well yeah that's an idea i've always had since like mm. probably the lost world is like as soon as there are dinosaurs on the mainland i always just love you know when beached whales roll in i always love the idea of like someone walking down the beach instead of there being a bunch of birds just eating it it's like a bunch of birds on the carcass and then a t-rex sort of like lifts its head up from behind it or something like that and the Mm. birds scatter because the t-rex is eating the whale and uh you created such a cool piece of artwork for that and that that still is that's one of those things that i want to get in somehow eventually one way or another or realize one way or another eventually uh, it will happen one day (laughs) so you know we discussed a lot of things about Dino Tracker and Dominion so we can just understand the project understand the film understand the tone so we can just align the goals of Dino Tracker to Jurassic World Dominion as much as possible this was the call with us the Chaos Theorem team um, Colin and the Universal Marketing uh, team wasn't it yeah. yeah, and we kind of like, you know, we discussed a lot of different things, just that way we can all kind of have a clear idea of the sandbox that we're playing in, the toys that we have at our disposal, the roles that we're playing with, everything along those lines is a really, you know, beneficial conversation, I think, for all parties, because we can understand what they were doing, and then they could really understand where we want to bring this, and it really helped everything kind of come together. But um, one of the con- one of the questions that were just, it was burning in the back of my head, and I really made sure that I got that question in there to call in is about you know i prepped it with like the concept of legacy dinosaur designs having their own designs them being their own in universe canon different versions variations of dinosaurs maybe we don't understand why they're different but we know that they did exist and they're different and uh asked about call asked colin about um can we bring some of those legacy dinosaur designs into dino tracker and he was he gave like an enthusiastic hell yeah to that um and uh, I don't think we really went into it any further than that, but it was just very much like a quick little question. It was like, yeah, no, that's awesome. Yes, I love it. Like, bring it all together. And that's also, it made sense to us because this movie was bringing the Jurassic Park characters back into the movie. Um, and also, as we now, as as we even knew then, um, Biosyn had animals from Sorna. So while a lot of it's off screen, you can presume that some of these species were also existing uh, at Biosense Preserve or elsewhere in the world. You know, you do see the what can be deemed as a Jurassic, you know, the Highland male Velociraptor tail in Malta. Um, The reality of that was they didn't make a raptor tail for that. That was a Dilophosaurus tail um, animatronic, but painted like a Jurassic Park 3 raptor. And that was just an Easter egg by the art team. That was just something that the art team went rogue on and got in there, um, which is pretty funny. But it aligned really well with what we wanted to do. It's funny um, how a lot of things you have to go rogue on with these, <laughs> these things. We did. So you asked then, um, so after we got the go-ahead, so we were asking about, you know, all the modern Jurassic World designs. And then, like, you know, we got the new Allosaurus. And then I think you asked about, do you have the Fallen Kingdom one as well, the Juvenile? And they're like, oh, yeah, sure. Um but uh then you said you don't happen to have the jurassic park three raptors and they're like yeah sure here you go (laughs) now those were not in a 
finished. They, they, you, you had to do a lot of work, Manuel, to make them make to make them essentially. Like you basically had like was it a pretty basic OBJ file or what exactly yeah. was it? It was. I think it was the, the original file that they, they were using in the anim animatics that they were doing for uh, Jurassic World. I think mm. there were a lot of animatics with the JP3 Raptor. And so it, the silhouette was there, the shape was there, but it didn't have like any of the details yeah. essentially. Well, that's because they texture. used to they had they used to paint texture maps. It wasn't really embedded in the model, so that's. Do you think that's probably why it was so basic? Yeah, it, I imagine that they probably do have those texture files somewhere, and it just might have been one of the things that, like, they don't know where it is, or who knows? I mean, the fact that they even had... I'm not surprised that they have the Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptor model saved. What I'm surprised is they had it saved in, in a workable state that they could send it to us. Well, uh, that was <laughs> for context, that workable state. Manuel, what was the size, its file size, of the biggest dinosaur we had what was the biggest file size for was it the brachiosaurus, it was the brachiosaurus yeah. what was it, it like? was like 200 gigabytes yeah so 200 gigs for the brachiosaurus how big was the jp3 velociraptor in file size less than a mega i think it's like six megabytes i think yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness it's like it was a oh, tiny file tiny. right yeah. absolutely minuscule and um, it was covered of holes that i had to fix all of them, mm -hmm. and then do all the textures and all the detailing. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. You're like one of those people who fix old paintings, like Renaissance paintings, like bringing them back to life after so many years in storage. Um, but yeah, so we, after all that, we basically we had the JP3 Raptor at, to to use, and so then the big question was, well, how are we going to use them? like and what do we want to see and i think i was pushing that i one of the things i and i'm still pushing it kind of to this day um that i really want to see more pack mentality from these things i want i want to actually see my my dream one day is to see a pack of these velociraptors not i'm not saying these specific jp3 ones but just like cl the classic jurassic velociraptor pack take down large prey i still want to see that to this day but we had this um idea that uh we had it of in a way of showing that and chris you found the perfect location uh should we talk about that a little bit yeah um so we originally had a different video planned and filmed for eventually filmed for the dress part three velocity but it's a more complex video um personally i like we were talking about how if you know if the stars align and we get to do more work in the future that's a video i'd like to bring back um so without giving away too much though it was in a junkyard and mm. um it was also snowy and it was going to be such a really really weird unique setting and video um it wasn't originally and, in snow though was it <laughs> no well, <laughs> so it's it was a real working junkyard so i had to get permission to film um and i had to go there during off hours so i had to arrange the time and everything like that so when i went there and scouted it out it was sort of it looked what you'd imagine a junkyard to look like Here's the camera above my head, slightly tilted down, slightly tilted straight, slightly tilted down. That is above my head, as high as my arms go. And again, for 360. The day that we uh, locked in to film, it ended up being a really, really big surprise snowstorm. Um, and I had to make it work. So uh, next thing I know, I'm out there running around and getting some of the employees to run around on video uh, in the deep snow as like the wind is blowing and it's like like four degrees Fahrenheit outside or something like that and it just do but it was really funny and it really changed the look of the video and I'm still kind of bummed we couldn't get the rusty look in mm. but it was also kind of cool once you like yeah, I don't know. It's really unique. Although it we thought off thematically yeah. it was going to play into like because we knew in the film you, the audiences were going to see blue in the snow, so it was kind of like one of those things we're marketing that marketing that movie. So it's like you know to see raptors in the snow would be a really cool thing because they're going to see that in the film later on. But yeah, what maybe one day that that video will be used. Whether hopefully. it's raptors or something else, it's just it's a really cool video. Yeah, yeah it's we got awesome. people running around in the snow and.
so the um, junkyard video, it was a larger video, and it was going to be a little bit more complex, and we realized that we had to do something a little shorter and uh, simpler. Well, Ma- Manuel uh, basically demanded that we do, yeah. do something smaller, yeah. which was the right move, in my opinion. <laughs> Completely. And, he um, called it right. So I went and recorded basically right down the street from me. I walked there, um, did a bunch of takes where I would pretend to see something run and then throw my phone in the air at the end like I got hit by a raptor. Um, which was always kind of fun. And I just had a big otter box case on it. I would try to like really give it like a twist and flip. So I got some really dramatic, uh, oh man, how many takes did we do also? Uh, was... You did so many. I sat through and watched all of them and it was one that you did the one that ended up in the final one that really you know you, well you did a take actually of that one and then I think we you went back out one last time to reshoot it mm-hmm. but the reason I really liked that the one that ended up being the final footage we used is because I like the dynamic of you know the the whole story of the new film is dinosaurs have gone global and they're in our, our world now you know and they're not going anywhere and humans are kind of at a loss. That's the whole premise. Like, you know, oh, we're going to have to live with dinosaurs now. We're going to have to coexist or whatever. So I like that that visually because you're stood in the sort of foresty area, but the raptors are on the concrete. They're going to be in the car park. So it's like we've switched places. Like man has gone into the wild and the dinosaurs have taken over the human settlements kind of thing. So just visually, with no words spoken, it just it, it, it perfectly encapsulates what we're marketing with with Dominion right. so I just really like that idea and I still think that's one of the my favourite visuals not just because it's the JP3 Raptors but visually I think that just perfectly sums up what we were trying to do with Dino Tracker in a single shot show them in a very naturalistic way before the uh before the implied chase happens, you know, they're just, you know, one's lounging there on the concrete, the other one's, you know, approaching it. I really like that, just that dynamic that uh, that we get to see with the raptors. I think the lounging thing is pretty cool, seeing a raptor lying down. I don't think we've Social seen that. display. I think we've seen that in the movies. Yeah. Um, little, little the, like that. I thought, it, like, it, I, I love the dynamic, because it reminds me of, like, you know how the female raptors in JP3 are, like, the matriarch? It's like mm-hmm. that male might as well be stood over her, like feeding her grapes. Like, <laughs> so yeah. he's like, he's like, like, okay. And I do like the idea that there's just two of them because, like, it just visually you're asking, like, well, are there others around? Which is that's what the person's going to be thinking. It, it automatically puts fans who know how these animals operate as packs in a kind of um, nervous position already because you're like, well, there's only two of them, but these come in packs, so there's going to be more, right? Or is it only those two? It's like, questions are there which echoes the movie too because you, you do see a couple shots in jp3 where it's like she has like one of her soldiers with her or whatever you want to mm. call them you know like it's, it's very much like lion yeah. ride in verse yeah yeah, yeah. For me it was it was in, incredible because we didn't see them in uh Jurassic Park 3 so it's like uh, being the person that is going to bring them to life again for something official because I think most of the people were waiting for for watching them again in something official and also watching all the reaction of the people um, with a, like it's the, the JP3 Raptor or it's blue uh, because there were some people talking about if it was blue or not and um, yeah having to do this scene and trying to to bring them just in a really naturalistic way just two animals that they are interacting, something that we are on, see a lot of times in documentaries about lions, where you see the female that is really calm, and all the males are around, like, watching them. So, in the end, it was like a 
really cool way to to bring all these emotions and all these uh, kind of things together. Um, in the end, it wasn't the, the this video that Jack, that Chris had recorded, but at least we we had something. I hope we had more time to to do something longer and more exciting. But I think for for them that we had, it's really really nice. It's definitely Just getting them in there is really you know I mean people freaked out when we dropped that video, um, rightfully so because it's the resurrection of a design that has seemingly gone extinct and we sort of brought that back um although it is you do see them in the jurassic world in the innovation center if you pay very close attention yeah. <laughs> which was one of our you know one of the things that we looked at initially because we were trying to think you know how does this all make sense are they all part of the you know are they still around and it it, it does make sense